Hey everybody, good evening. I know some of y'all probably been wondering why hasn't Tanya given her Housewives of Atlanta review? <laughs> My bad, y'all. My bad. I'm a little late, but here I am. <laughs> I've been doing too much the last um, week with um, baking cakes and stuff for customers over the holiday and trying to, um, you know, recuperate after working 13 hours on the holiday. And I'm like, oh, God, I need to hurry up and get this review out before the next season starts. <laughs> But anyway, you guys, um, make sure on your way in, you like the video, share the video, subscribe if you're just scrolling through. <laughs> just hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can receive all my notifications. And don't forget, don't forget, I started another YouTube channel for my cake decorating followers who follow me on YouTube, I mean on Facebook, on my Tanya's Primetime TV Get it together, Tanya. Get it together. Those of you who follow me, <laughs> who follow me on my Facebook page, Tanya's Delight Slice by Slice, my cake decorating channel. I started a YouTube channel for that. So don't forget, head over there um, to YouTube, uh, Tanya's Delight Slice by Slice, and subscribe to that channel too. And you can follow me, you know, as I decorate some cakes, you know, for some of my friends and family members and customers and whatnot. But anyway, um, thank you for tuning in tonight. We're going to be discussing The Housewives of Atlanta, Season 11, Episode 19. And it was called Final Destination. And if you look in the title, um, it's Destin-Ation. Because, of course, they were still in Destin, Florida, on their ladies' trip, which they had, um, you know decided to go on with blessings from Greg, Nene's husband, because originally, remember, it was supposed to be a couple's um, trip, but a lot of the guys couldn't come. So he was like, you know what, Nene, babe, go ahead, gather up the ladies. Y'all head on down to Destin. Y'all enjoy it yourself and have a ladies trip. So they still are in Destin, Florida. And the show, you know, to start it out, in the beginning, um, some of the some of the ladies was on the phone, you know, with their guys. You know, Portia was on the phone with her sis. Candy was on the phone with Ty. You know, checking in with their booskies and everything. But you know, uh, Portia, she was on the phone with her sister Lauren. And telling her that she has been totally, you know, been keeping her pregnant a secrecy from the ladies. And she claims it's because of mainly a prior miscarriage. So, you know, how some people are, they have a miscarriage and they don't want to announce it right away because they want to get through like that first trimester. So I guess that's probably, you know, she didn't want to jinx herself. So I, I get that part, but I'm thinking also what well, I was assuming more so that it's also because of the naysayers in the group. I ain't going to say no names, Candy. <laughs> but, you know, because of the naysayers in the group that's been hating on Dennis. Um, and in order to keep her secret safe, you know, she's been lying, telling them that she's on a cleansing diet, which means no alcohol at all. And they should have known right away. Portia, no liquor, cleansing diet. Mm. <laughs> I can see Portia normally doing a cleansing diet every now and then, including alcohol. Not with no alcohol, but including alcohol, because Portia likes to pull up, <laughs> especially when they all get together. But um, that's what I was thinking. Like, you know, it's not just the fact that she don't want to jinx herself. I think she just didn't want to tell them, period, in the first place, you know, because... They all been hating on Dennis. Well, not all of them, but, you know, quite a few. And Candy, especially. <laughs> but what she did was she found a bottle. Well, actually, it wasn't even a bottle. It was like a big old Kool-Aid jug, a big pitcher. And what she did was she poured a bottle of Hennessy into a Kool-Aid jug, filled the bottle up with some organic apple juice and some Coca-Cola to make it look kind of like, you know... 
Hen Hennessy, make it look like Henny. <laughs> but um, as far as the drink that was in the uh, Kool Aid picture, I wonder what she did with that drink. Like, did they ever show where that picture went? <laughs> I'm assuming she probably gave it to Nene. I'm assuming she probably gave it to Nene. But I thought Shamari had made it very, very clear um, to Marlo that her fashion is good enough for her and definitely good enough for her hubby Ron. But Marlo was so persistent, I mean, so darn persistent, you know, into changing this girl. After she's like, okay, you done threw in enough shade. You talking about I ain't got no style. You talking about I need help. I need a new wardrobe. You know, all this, that, and the third. So she was like, forget it. You know what? She's so persistent. Go ahead. Dress me up like a Barbie doll. Do whatever you want to do with me. Just have your way, Marlo. <laughs> just have your way. <laughs> but y'all have to admit that just like the lady said, she... After she dressed Shamari, she looked just like a mini Marlo. Like, just like a mini Marlo. So if that's what Marlo was going for, then that is what she accomplished. <laughs> they was like, this is the Marlo remix. <laughs> she was like, this is the Marlo remix. But she did. She did look just like, uh, like a mini Marlo. Let me plug my uh, computer. Put my computer up before it go dead on me, honey. Before it go dead, I just got the alert that it's low battery. But, um, so if that's what she was trying to accomplish, then she didn't definitely accomplish that. But I thought she looked kind of cute, you know. Nevertheless, I thought she looked kind of cute. But, y'all, when they was having breakfast and played the scene of the twerk contest the night before, <sighs> What, what was Cynthia doing? Like, what in the heavens was Cynthia doing down there? <laughs> I'm like, okay, she had it. She was in the right position at first, but then she got on all fours. Like, who twerks on, uh, okay, what happened to put your hands on your hip? Ain't that how you twerk or like on your side or in the air or, you know, like, you know, I'm like, Cynthia, if you don't sit your non twerking butt down some darn where I was hollering, like, what in the world is she doing? I, was she even trying? <laughs> I can't rewind in the video like, what, what is Somebody help her, please. Somebody help her, please. She needs some twerk lessons ASAP. <laughs> and then she was bouncing around. She was like on all fours. And, and she wasn't even like no arch in the back, no dip in the back, no nothing. She was just bouncing, bounce, bouncing around and stuff. I'm like, what the? Looks like a little kangaroo. <laughs> That's what she looked like, like a little kangaroo, how they be hopping around. <laughs> But I'm like, no, nah, that, that's that's not the business. That's not the business. <laughs> but then, um, I ain't going to lie. When Nene announced the game that she came up with, you know, called, it was, it was a talent show. And she called it Bitch Stole My Talent. That she and Portia, you know, was hosting. And Marlo put on that little, and I do mean little, outfit for the fashion competition i was like if you don't take off that little outfit and give it to cynthia or somebody else smaller than you i mean she about done died by suffocation trying to put that outfit on it took her lying down on her stomach i can't remember if she was on her stomach or her back but she had to lay down. Some of the ladies had to help her, like, pull the outfit up, zip the outfit up, you know, snatch it together and stuff, to, you know, just so she can get in the outfit, but not just to get in it, but also stay in the outfit. <laughs> I don't know how she stayed in that outfit. But anyway, I know she was sucking it all in, like, barely breathing. Y'all know how we do 
be trying to put on some cute little pants, especially if we can't fit in them no more. Instead of going out buying some bigger size, we just squeeze everything in there. <laughs> Look like a busted can of biscuits. <laughs> Hey, um, YouTube, is that Mark? What's up, Mark? <laughs> I'm just doing a review of Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so she had on that little bitty outfit. And then Nene, um, she pitted Eva and Cynthia against each other for the catwalk competition. And she pitted Candy and Shamari against each other for the singing competition. And last but not least, she pitted Marlo and Tanya against each other for the fashion competition. And okay, so it started off <laughs> with Marlo against Tanya. I be want to say Tanya because it looks like my name, but hers is spelled and like Tanya instead of Tanya. But anywho, um, Nene thought Tanya, Tanya, see, I just did it. Nene thought Tanya was being shady um, because amongst all the de designer clothes she had on, she also had on a pair of Nene's shades, you know, from her little boutique. Now, I didn't find it quite shady at all, what Tanya said, but Nene, you know, she thought she was throwing shade at her about her shades. But she was simply to me saying that just because... Um, you know, everything you wear don't have to be expensive to look great. When she was showing off, you know, all her fashions and everything, and then she was like, oh, and I got these pair of shades, you know, from Nene's Boutique. I, I got it. <laughs> I got what she was trying to say. I mean, I don't dress up like you know, really girly, like, I just never have, I used to be a tomboy when I was little, um, when I was a young child, so it's nothing for me to rock a pair of sneakers, um, they're usually in the range of 120 to 150, you know, my sneakers, um, and some nice jeans and a shirt and some cheap shades, <laughs> I mean, and for, you know, them ladies, even sneakers around that amount ain't nothing but, you know, pennies to them. But for the average everyday person, average women, they ain't paying no $150 for no sneakers. I know plenty of women, and I, they be down there trying to get them $39.99s, them $29.99s. You know what I'm saying? And no shade, no shade. I just, I'm a sneaker. You know, I like sneakers. But, you know, and then I throw on, like, some cheap shades. Like, some $5 pair of shades, you know, from wherever. I don't even care. <laughs> Shoot, if I go in the grocery store and I see some cheap shades, I might grab them. Like, oh, this is cute. But, so, you know, I don't think she was throwing shade about her shades. She was just saying, simply, you can have an expensive outfit on, some nice shoes, some nice stilettos, and you don't have to have on no $300 pair of shades. But anyway, Nene, she sounded like she's a bit offended. <laughs> but in the end, Tanya killed it. She killed Marlo. Um, Man, she killed Marlo. She had like Okay, I already said what Marlo had on. I, 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 I don't know why she chose that particular outfit for the fashion competition. But anywho, um, Tanya, she had like a six in one outfit. At least that's what it seemed like. Like it was a whole bunch of pieces. She was just taking off layers of clothes. She started with a nine to five job, get up, um, and ended up in a beautiful beach attire. You know, this little cute uh, swimsuit, bathing suit. Um, yeah, so she, she really outdid, she really outdid Marlo, and Marlo just knew she was about to kick her butt in fashion, <laughs> and I kind of thought she would, because she's like the main one, always talking about she's the fashionista of the group, and trying to redress everybody else, and telling them they, they ain't got no style, you know, stuff like that, so I kind of thought she would win, but anywho, <laughs> but as far as the singing um, competition, <sighs> I honestly thought Candy was going to win. Like, I honestly thought Candy was going to win. Like, Candy, she has a tremendous range. Um, she's been performing way longer and has way more hits. 
and singing and songwriting than Shamari, but I don't know what went wrong. <laughs> like after Shamari, okay, and the song Shamari sang, okay, she did good. She really did good, but she was safe. I mean, who can't sing the eyes is on the sparrow? She she did a safe gospel song, and again, she can sing. But um, Candy, I mean, she got like hundreds and hundreds. Her portfolio, I mean, of all the songs that she sang, I was like, she started off, and I it sounded like she was about to sing for a funeral. I'm like, what is she talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I thought Candy was going to blow Shamari out the water. But instead, Shamari was out there standing on the water like Jesus, and Candy sank like Peter. I was like, what the? Okay, Candy, I love you, girl. I don't know what happened. She still can hit them high notes, although it was a little pitchy and no shade, because you can sing me under the bus. But it was a little, I'm just being honest, it was a little pitchy. Um, she missed a few notes and there was a few cracks. I mean, <laughs> but she can still hit the Mariah Carey notes better than Mariah because I didn't hear Mariah try to hit her high notes again. And that's a wrap. That's that I love Mariah too, but that's a wrap. <laughs> but what happened was Candy, she was like, you know what? I don't, I don't know. I, I just expected more. I, I, I don't know. Did she want her to win? What y'all think? What y'all think? Did y'all actually, like, I don't know. Did y'all think she did better than Shamari? Do y'all agree with the ladies when they said Shamari won? I don't know. I don't know. But anywho, I was like, I don't know. I was just thinking about Simon Powell. Like, you know how he says, you should have chosen a different song. You should have chosen. I can hear him now. You should have chosen a different song selection. <laughs> That's what I think she have done. She should have chosen a different song selection because that was so not it. But as far as Cynthia and Eva, I expected Eva to come through the same way I expected Marlo to come through because of the simple fact Eva has been throwing shade to Cynthia, like, almost since the very beginning of this season. Like, I don't know how many times she done made jokes about Cynthia being old. Um, She said she's vintage. You know, Cynthia, I still think Cynthia looks good. She has a great body. I mean, I think she still can get these younger ones, you know, <laughs> run for their money. But anyway, Eva's like, you know what? She's the grandmother of modeling. Just call her house mother. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. But when she called her vintage, I was like, oh, that's low. That's low, Eva. That's real low. But anyway, so I just knew that Eva, she was going to win hands down. She was going to win hands down. But Eva didn't learn today because Cynthia still got it. I was like, yes, work that wrong way. But the little number that <laughs> Eva had on, that little black little piece, I don't know if it was a two piece or if it was a whole body piece. I don't know what it was showing her little butt cheeks under or lack of butt cheeks under the, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> no ass at all. That's what I was thinking. No ass at all. <laughs> but anyway, Cynthia, she also had on a black piece and I was just like, girl, Cynthia was looking hot hot. I was like, you better walk. You better walk. She took that catwalk and set it on fire. And I was, oh, I was down there standing up, giving her a standing ovation. I was like, okay, work, work. I mean, she couldn't twerk, but she could show work that, uh, runway. <laughs> she can definitely still work that, um, you know, that catwalk. So she did a great job. I was like, catch that Eva, catch that vintage. That's what you call vintage. Okay. Okay, but anyway, they both did a great job. They both did a great job. 
And of course, we all knew Nene was going to win the hosting competition against Portia. I don't care who Nene would have won it against as far as, you know, hosting. She would have won anyway because Nene is just so full of, I, she's just so full of character. So, you know, I love her. But anyway, she won that hands down as well. But I have to give it to Portia. She really, really tried. She really tried. <laughs> but overall, the ladies, you know, they look like, you know, it was it was a playful competition, you know, a little shade here and there. But overall, it looks like they had a lot of fun, you know, doing the competition. But then it had been raining a lot down there. And so since they still couldn't go out, or should I say, didn't want to go out <laughs> with all the rain and everything. They was talking about their hair getting wet and all that kind of stuff. But anywho, they still um, went out for a day. And Nene has scheduled two different sessions for the ladies. And half of the ladies went to do Pilates. And the other half went to do massages. And I was wondering, like... How does she determine or decide which group would do massages and which group would do the Pilates? Because she never uh, it was like, okay, y'all, I think, you know, y'all should do this, y'all should do that. They just behind the scenes split it up. But <laughs> then she said <laughs> in the um, green room, she was like, um, some of these ladies just need help. They need a little sisters on how to swing them legs around for their men. You know, they need some help being flexible. And I was like, oh, Lord. One person I think do not need no help is Candy. <laughs> I, d with her dungeon and all, who all them toys and stuff, that's all I got to say. <laughs> I don't think Candy needs no help. Now, Cynthia, um, she swears... That her man, you know, has been in her little waters and everything. But, so far, we ain't seen him and her together yet, have we? Or did I miss something? Because I see him on the phone. I see him on Skype, on FaceTime. But he ain't... <laughs> this is episode nine? <laughs> episode nine so i'm like how they getting it in and how he's swimming around in her waters and he ain't even in the a i don't know anyway <laughs> anyway but as far as portia you know portia might have been fooling everybody else but i knew i knew i didn't know who she was gonna tell but I knew eventually she was going to let the cat out the bag, you know, to somebody in the group about her being pregnant. Portia can't hold no tea. Not even her own tea. <laughs> Not even her own tea. Now, the bigger question is, will Nene be able to hold the tea? Especially since the ladies in the massage group, you know, that half, they got the massages. They was pondering over the idea of Portia because, okay, Portia, she says she's on a cleansing. She's on a cleanse, a health cleanse. So she's not doing liquor. She's not doing liquor. And the day that they set out, you know, to do Pilates and massages, she got a headache. She don't feel good. I mean, they was like, dang, could Portia be pregnant? Like, hmm, you know, two and two. And I and even though they saw her like, you know, drink it from that Hennessy bottle, which was actually filled up with uh apple juice and Coca-Cola, um, I think they still had a feeling like she ain't telling the whole truth, you know. But anyway, I wonder how long Nene is going to keep this secret, how long she was going to keep quiet. But um, Candy and them, you know, remember that scene when they was at the restaurant and Candy was explaining to them all what she heard about, you know, Dennis, Portia's boyfriend. And everybody was like, you know, except for I think it was, was it Marlo? I think it was Marlo who said she would tell. But I think everybody else was like, don't tell her. Don't tell her. You know, keep that on the low. She don't need to know. She wouldn't accept it from you, Candy. She wouldn't take it the right way, you know. And Nene was part of that group. But who was the one who broke into Portia? Like, real quick. Like, real quick. She couldn't wait to spill that tea. And then she turned around and said, I don't know who said it. <laughs> After Portia had told us 
uh, it was Nene. Nene, the one who told me what Candy said. <laughs> so, again, I don't know how long she's going to be able to keep that tea. But, um, as far as the Hennessy, again, in that jug in her room, I'm thinking she probably ended up giving the real Hennessy to Nene. <laughs> to Nene. And maybe that'll keep her quiet. But then again, y'all know how liquor is. Liquor make you talk. <laughs> but then, you know, once it stopped raining, the ladies finally got the chance to get all dialed up for a night on the town. And they got really glammed up. Um, as far as their outfits, I love each and every one of their outfits. Um, but what do y'all think about Nene? Like, going in on her friend Tanya, you know, regarding her fashion. I was kind of shocked. I mean, I was actually appalled. You know, I, I was actually appalled. Like, Nene, I don't know where all this was coming from. I was like, okay, Petty Betty. Like, she was, like, really being kind of rude and kind of mean. And I thought it was so unexpected because, I mean, she brought her into this group. And she was telling the ladies, you know, how she's a great person and this, this, and that. And then, just because she you, she won the competition against um, Marlo. She won the fashion competition. And so Shamari was like, okay, Marlo, you been trying to tell me how to dress. You been trying to tell me what looks good and I don't look good. I ain't got fashion. I ain't got style. But you lost the competition. So therefore, <laughs> Shamari, you know, she wanted to, you know, get all dialed up and do accessories and all that. And so she went to Tanya, you know, to borrow some of her accessories um, because she won the fashion competition. Then Nene was like, well, I've never seen her wear much, you know, accessories. And then Tanya responded, I've never said, I've never declared to be the queen of accessories. Like, what was so wrong with Shamari going to Tanya, you know, and giving her props for having great taste? That's basically what she was saying. She got great taste. She won the competition. I want her to help me dress tonight. But for some reason, Nene, I don't know. She got out of pocket with Tanya, and I don't really understand why. So I don't know. Y'all fill me in if y'all got <laughs> if y'all got an idea, you know, what set Nene off. But um, and it was crazy because it was like right after, okay, Shamari and Marlo. After Shamari um, basically gave her her props, then um, Marlo started going in on Shamari. You know, telling her, somebody needs to help you. Even though I didn't win and you went to Shamari, anybody here could give you better advice and help you dress better than you've been dressing. Okay. Okay. That. Basically, she's been saying that since the beginning of the season. <laughs> so that was not shocking to me. But then when Shamari called her a B, she was like, bitch. And then she got mad. Like, how you going to get mad because she called you a bitch? Like, you've been taking digs at her all season long about the way she dressed, the way she looks. She don't have a problem with it. Her man, Ronnie... You know, DeVoe don't have a problem with it. So why you got a problem with her style? Let her be her. Everybody should be different and dress the way they want. You know, but then she was like, okay, I ain't going to have too many of those. But you know how you about to be ready to fight. You into it with somebody and they call you a bitch or any other name out your word. I ain't going to have too many. I ain't going to take. I ain't going to be too many more. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, say it again, <laughs> say it again. I'm like, if the shoe fits, Marlo, you better slide that women's size 13 right on your foot. And no, I don't know what size she wears, but she looks like a 13. She just looks like she might wear a 13. But anyway, no shade. <laughs> no shade. But then, like, Shamari, you know, apologized for calling her a B, and Marlo called her one back. And then Nene was like, you know what, you guys? This is enough. Let the girl wear what she wants. Why do you keep talking about her? Say That is so rude. Just stop it. Just stop it. And I was like, okay, Nene. All right. 
put your foot down because they was they was about to take it somewhere else. They was about to take it somewhere else when she said, say it one more again. I'm like, mm. and I think that Shamari is a little feisty one. I think she get with anybody at that table. I really do. I really do. But um, that's why I was kind of shocked or taken aback when Nene started going in on her friend, Tanya. Like, you just stopped them from arguing and told her she was being rude and let the girl dress how she wants. And then you go in on Tanya, questioning her fashion and all this kind of stuff. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I was, like, so confused. <laughs> I was, like, so confused. But anyway, anyway, when they started talking about... uh. <laughs> When Shamari started talking about, um, who was that? <laughs> no, that was, um, Candy. Okay. Marlo told Shamari <laughs> she only won the singing competition because she sang a gospel song. And again, I think she sounded great. She can sing. She really can. Candy can sing too. I just don't know what happened. Like, and she been touring with Escape. I don't know what happened. But anyway, Shamari won. But Marla was throwing shade at you. you only won because you sang a gospel song. You played it safe. And your voice is really horrible. Like, really awful. I was like, come on now. Marlo, really? Just because she chose to ask Tanya for some styling tips instead of you? Girls. Okay, that was too much. But then, uh, <laughs> Marlo, I'm like, what are you really good at? I mean, besides fashion, I mean, okay. Nene, she owns all these, you know, she has all these businesses. She has boutiques, candy. She's in a singing group. She then wrote music. She owns Everything in Atlanta, dang near. Restaurants and everything else. Got a dungeon in the basement for you to play in. I mean, <laughs> I mean, everybody, like, Marlo, I mean, not Marlo, but Shamari. Uh, I'm like, what are you really good at? Besides finding the best sugar daddies. I mean, what are you really good at? But you always throw a shade to somebody else, but... Anyway, in the words of Michelle A.T. Elian, I digress. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm glad, again, I'm glad Nene shut that down. But then when she flipped on Tanya, I was like, okay, again, I don't know where this is coming from. Why? Uh, if it's all over the glasses, the shades, because she said, made sure everybody knew they were a lot cheaper than everything she had on. Ah, oh, Nene, get over it. Get over it. But then when she told her she was being ignorant, I was like, Nene, really? You told her she's being ignorant? <laughs> you don't want to appear mad about them talking about them shades just because they was like a little bit cheaper than everything else she had on. But anyway, who was being really ignorant? I don't know. Y'all tell me. Y'all tell me, <laughs> but Miss <Ms>. Leaks, <laughs> that was, that was, that was kind of petty. That was kind of petty. But then the poor, the leprechaun statement, the comment that, uh, Portia, <laughs> she was like, you know what? You always getting offended, uh, Shamari, when somebody talk about your fashion. But when you saw my man, you said he looked like a leprechaun. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> When they showed the scene, when they rewound and showed that scene with Dennis in that green suit, I was like, oh my God, if that ain't too funny. She said all he's missing was his top hat and the four-leaf closer. I was on the flow. But then Portia's clap back. When she started talking about her husband, she said, you know what? I love a good brow, but your husband doesn't have one. I was like... <laughs> Nene was laughing so hard. She had to throw her her lap napkin, her napkin she had on her lap. She had to throw it over her face. She about fell out of her chair. And I was like, why the heck did I notice that before? Like, when did he lose his eyebrows? Has he has he never had eyebrows? See, now I'm going to have to go online. I'm going to have to go all the way back, watch some of those new edition videos because... I'm like, when did he lose his eyebrows? Okay. 
this man is how old is he? Like forty nine? I well, I guess he. Uh, I don't know. I I don't know. I ain't seen too many fifty year old men's without their eyebrows. I know your hairline, you know, goes to the back. You know, once you start getting, you know, around that age, a little older. But the eyebrows, I did not even notice that he didn't have any eyebrows. When they showed that picture, I was dead. I mean, I was hollering. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was so funny. (laughs) But anyway, (laughs) y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode. These ladies are a trip. I'm like, oh, my God. They had me in stitches. Like the entire episode, they had me in stitches. <laughs> but anyway, y'all put it in the comment, put it in the chat, what y'all thought about this episode. Um, even after the video is over, y'all know y'all can still comment and I will still hit you up in the chat or hit you, whether it's YouTube. I'm live right now on YouTube and I'm live on Instagram. So whichever platform you're on, leave me a comment, leave me a message. Make sure you like the video, share the video on your social media platforms. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channels. I have three of them. Tanya's Primetime TV Media Reviews. Tanya Knows No Limit. And my baking, my cake decorating channel, Tanya's Delights. Slice by slice. So make sure you check them all out. Make sure you subscribe to them. Hit the notification bell so you can receive all my notifications. Please and thank you very kindly. And in the meantime and in between time, Prime Time Squad, make sure you stay blessed. Stay safe. Be safe. Stay blessed. Have a wonderful weekend. I don't know when I might come back to you guys. Um, Maybe tomorrow. Maybe at 7 p.m. Sounds good? Good. Because I'm coming at you tomorrow, 7 p.m., and I'm doing a review on my sisters from another Mr. Movie Review platform. I will post the notifications for a reminder. We are going to be reviewing, me and my sister friend, we are going to be reviewing Bird Box with Sandra Bullock, that new movie that is on Netflix. If you have not watched it, Look on Netflix. All of y'all got Netflix. I know y'all got Netflix. Y'all got some fire boxes. Y'all still in cable. Y'all doing something. <laughs> anyway, make sure y'all check that video out. It's on Netflix. It's called Bird Box. And it's been getting mixed reviews, good and bad. Um... <sighs> I ain't going to give y'all no spoilers right now, but I'm kind of like 50-50 with the movie right now. But anyway, I want to hear from you guys. So tomorrow, 7 p.m., I will be doing a live review with my friend Samantha, another sister from another mister. So anyway, make sure you tune in and make sure you share it live when you see the notifications. And again, in the meantime and in between time, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out. Deuces.